Hello and welcome back. We're at section 2.3 and we're going to learn what the slope intercept form of a straight line is. And this is a much more uh, reliable and quick way of graphing a line rather than just making a table of values. And just to make sure that we are clear on this, we know what the slope is now. The intercept, or really more specifically the y-intercept, is the y value where the graph intersects the y-axis. That's a very special point and it's nice to keep track of that. So that's what we mean when we say the intercept, usually the y-intercept. So let's suppose that some line has a slope of m and a y-intercept of b. If the y-intercept is b, that means it goes through the point 0, comma b. And let's assume that xy is any other point on the line. So really we have two points. What we have is this point 0b, and we have any point xy. And so what we can do is get the slope, which is y minus b over x minus 0, and that is going to equal the slope, which we're told is m. So that's the same as saying y minus b is equal to m times x, and then we can write the equation like this, y equals mx plus b. And so that is the equation of the line if we're given the slope and the y-intercept. It's a pretty simple equation. So if you know the slope, which is m, and you know the y-intercept, which is b, then this must be the equation of the line. And that, my friends, is another thing that's a really big deal. The slope-intercept form of the line. Very important. So just as a really simple example, suppose we're told that the slope of a line is minus two-thirds and the y-intercept is five. Then what's going to be the equation of the line? Well, we just simply plug into that form and y is equal to m x plus b. What could be simpler than that? Very, very easy. So there are a lot of ways that lines can be written, a lot of forms of a line. This is known as standard form. But suppose we want to change it from standard form to slope-intercept form. And if you look at slope-intercept form, the real big characteristic of this is that it's solved for y, that y is all by itself. So if I solve this equation for y, the first thing I'll do is subtract 3x. So I'll get minus 5y is equal to minus 3x plus 10. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by, that's right, minus 1 fifth. And I get y is equal to 3 fifths x minus 2. So what that means is the slope is equal to three-fifths, so the line goes up, not very steep though, and the y-intercept is minus two. So if I want to graph y equals three-fifths x minus two, I have two pieces of information. I have the y-intercept, which is minus two, so that means it goes through that point right there, and I'm told that the slope is three-fifths. The slope is 3 over 5, which is the change in the y over the change in the x. <clears throat> so what that means is, from this point here, the change in y is 3. So I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and the change in x is 5, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's see if I can put that point on. Up 3, 1, two, three, four, five, right there. 
In other words, the point 5, 1, as well as the point 0, minus 2, must be on my line. And we should check to see that 5, 1 satisfies this equation. If x is 5, 3 fifths times 5 is just going to be 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. Looks good. And so my line, then, would look like this. Ta-da! So that's the graph of this line. In other words, any point, any coordinates, x and y, that make this be true have to be somewhere on the line. And any point that's on the line has to make this equation true. Got it?